Hello and welcome to my easy to understand guide to the Lego movie with a focus on industry. This video is going to be particularly relevant for you if you are studying OCR GCSE media studies as it appears on a set text for that specification. I do have a separate video about the Lego movie video game so please make sure you check that out. So we'll start by looking at the production of the movie. Now Daniel Lin was the um, producer of the movie. He pitched the movie to Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers is obviously a very large film organisation, a conglomerate, um, part of the kind of film oligopoly within America. It's global. They're worth billions and billions of dollars. Um, they're part of a much larger conglomerate called AT&T. So they have a parent company that is worth even more than them. Um, and that meant that Warner Brothers had the money and the backing and the resources and reputation to make this film happen. At the time, Warner Brothers had lacked some success, particularly within the children's film market and the family film market. So they decided to take a risk on creating this film um, and to diversify into animation. And diversifying into other areas of production helps to share your risk and hopefully increase your profits. Because the film was seen as a little bit risky at the time, Warner Brothers did actually secure funding from other places as well. So for example, they shared some of the costs with the Village Roadshow Pictures and also from Rat Pack Entertainment. And sharing the costs with other companies helps to reduce the risk for your company too. Of course, in order to make the film, they had to form a synergetic partnership with Lego. They had to approach the company and convince them to give them the rights to the kind of uh, branding and the logo and the characters. And that was very important in order to make the film happen. Lego actually did agree to this very reluctantly at first, as long as their designers could be involved in the making of the film. The budget for this first movie was $60 million, which by today's standards is a little bit lower, but it's still quite a lot for an animated movie. When you factor in marketing and distribution, the budget was more like $100 million. Apart from the very end of the movie, everything in the movie was CGI. Um, and not just CGI, but it was all made from CGI bricks. So this was quite unusual. Rather than just creating the animation and being completely free with what they wanted to do, they made the decision to program their software with every available Lego brick that actually existed in real life so that they had to build any CGI characters and set from those very real Lego bricks. Lego were very insistent on this because they felt that it would be silly to make a film where there were things in the film that you couldn't actually build in real life with their Lego. So they wanted everything in the film to be really buildable. This was a huge undertaking because obviously it meant a massive amount of programming into computers, the development of new software that could operate the kind of CGI bricks. And it also meant there had to be a huge attention to detail as well. So for example, bricks, uh, some bricks, uh, the CGI made them look dusty. Some of the CGI bricks had cracks in them, for example. Um, some of the bricks were broken. Some of them had seams where they put kind of, kind of glued together. The, the money and the resources were really ploughed into making this as kind of realistic as possible. In order to do this, they actually partnered with an Australian studio called Animal Logic, who were um, known as being quite professional in terms of animation. They'd done full CGI films like Happy Feet before. So partnering with companies that had had existing success, again, helps to reduce your risk. Basing a film on an existing toy brand is genius because it means there's a huge pre-sold audience of people who already know the brand, who are already very familiar with it. Not just um, children, but also adults who've grown up with Lego as well. So it means that a number of people are going to go and see that film as pre-sold audiences, even without needing to know anything about it. So this use of Lego toys added some nostalgic elements for a lot of audiences. Family-friendly films are um, aimed at a huge, wide, mainstream audience of a very wide age range. In fact, Lego, I think, is marketed on the fact that it could be played with for people anywhere up to the age of, you know, 100 and over. So um, it, it's this idea that basing your product on a toy that is so widely enjoyed means that they automatically are going to have a very wide audience. 
It was really important for both Warner Brothers and Lego to make sure that the movie was going to be U rated in terms of the BBFC. And that is because obviously they are a family friendly brand. Uh, they have lots of young children as their users, players, audiences, etc. And so it meant that the film had to be very family friendly with no adult content in it. While some things are a little bit silly, maybe there's some suggestive comments from characters in jokes that only adults would get, the actual narrative itself is very child friendly. And that is in order to preserve the reputation and the branding of Lego and Warner Brothers. Another way that the film companies were able to increase the chance of success for the film was by the use of casting stars to do the voices for the characters. So for example, they had Will Ferrell, uh, they had Chris Pratt, Liam Neeson, Morgan Freeman. A lot of these people have very iconic voices that audiences would recognise anywhere. Um, and so including them in the film helps to draw in their fan bases as well. They were also able to use Warner Brothers characters to create this kind of cross promotion for Warner Brothers. So, for example, they included Wonder Woman and Batman, who are part of the um, Warner Brothers um, uh, franchise. And so um, the use of Warner Brothers characters helped cross promote their other movies as well. So, again, it's kind of creating this wholesale marketing for the Warner Brothers brand as well as the Lego brand. So there was a huge amount of marketing done for this film. Uh, for a start, there are Lego stores where they held lots of in-store events promoting the film. They also partnered with McDonald's to create Lego Movie Happy Meals, great way of targeting children and their parents. They used traditional marketing techniques like trailers, which were put onto TV and also onto YouTube. And they also had a variety of posters created for the film. The YouTube channel itself contained trailers, sneak peeks, interviews and behind the scenes. In the UK, as well as in other countries, they also had something called the Lego Movie Ad Break. And this is where in a traditional advertising break, so for example, in the middle of a soap opera like Coronation Street, all of the adverts were replaced by uh, adverts for those brands, but made from Lego. So this was a great way of promoting the film, getting people talking. The adverts ended up going viral. Um, so it's a really good kind of way of creating word of mouth for the movie and for the kind of CGI that was involved. Lego, of course, created over 17 Lego sets that were related to the movie that could be released in order to create more marketing and also to create more revenue. And in addition to that, they also released 16 collectible figures with characters from the film. They also released a huge range of other merchandise, including soft toys, um, accessories for kids' bedrooms, T-shirts, clothing, etc. Funko Pop partnership happened as well. And of course, they released a range of associated books, graphic novels, comics, and of course, the video game too. And all of that merchandise helps to target particularly a young audience. There are a number of Lego theme parks around the world. In fact, I think there is about seven or eight. And those theme parks used a special marketing tool where they created a 4D movie experience for uh, fans of the film to try and promote it and to show audiences what to expect in the cinema. On social media, they even included some interactive content where audiences were invited to submit their own Lego designs of vehicles that could then be used in the movie. The premiere for the film was actually both in America and also in Denmark. Denmark, of course, because that is the home of the Lego brand. The soundtrack for the film was also very popular. It was released on Warner Brothers subsidiary Water Tower Music. Obviously, being vertically and horizontally integrated like this means that you can distribute your own soundtrack as well, uh, keeping those costs in house and making even more money. In cinemas, the film had a global release in multiple cinemas, multiple screens around the world in a variety of formats. Warner Home Video, another subsidiary of Warner Brothers, also distributed the film onto home video, DVD, Blu-ray, etc. The film was also available via digital download, reflecting the fact that a lot of audiences are now accessing their film content online. Of course, a movie that is successful is often turned into some kind of franchise. And once Warner Brothers and Lego knew that this film had been a massive success, they immediately started planning more. So for example, there is also a Lego Batman movie. There's a Lego Ninjago movie. There's the Unikitty spin-off on the Cartoon Network. There was a Lego movie too as well. So lots more products that have been created as a result of this. 
Um, and that reflects Hesmond Halg's ideas that creating products based on existing successful ideas is a great way of maximising those profits. So that was my easy to understand guide to the Lego movie and industry. I have a separate video for the Lego movie video game, so make sure you check out that if it's relevant. And don't forget to subscribe for other videos that are going to be relevant for you. If you would like to leave a comment below, just uh, leave one and I will see what I can do in terms of suggestions for new videos and content.